Okay, Assalamualaikum. So, this is uh, the class for flood forecasting and hazard mapping. So, I'm Dr. Nora Eliza. Okay, you can just call me Eliza. So, we will have two uh, day of lectures, day one uh, and day two. So, I will just explain on day one. And uh, this is the slide for day one only. So, what will we uh, be looking into is on climate change and flood. So, before we start, uh, you need to do a quiz one pretest. So, uh, by now you should have done the test, uh, I mean the quiz first. Okay, uh, and then uh, you need to view this video, right? And you need to finish by two. Uh, basically, to understand climate change. Uh, and uh, how is it related to a uh, flood? Okay, and then uh, you need to do assignment one. Uh, estimate time is from two to three p.m. Okay, and then we will uh, have some presentation and discussion at uh, three thirty uh, p.m. Okay, and hopefully we will finish before five. Okay, so the big question is climate change. So what, what do you know about climate change? And uh, here is uh, the first thing that uh, we need to know is about IPCC. So IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel in Climate Change. So this is the uh, platform uh, made by uh, international to uh, discuss, share about uh, climate change reports. Eh? and um, understanding uh, okay so this uh, IPCC have some several assessment report where this is the basic uh, the basic report which uh, researchers or any individuals who are doing on analysis in climate change so this is the uh, and let's say the the Bible or the Quran. Okay, so this this is the report for climate change IPCC assessment report and working group reports by IPCC. So actually, this report have been done since nineteen ninety. Okay, so up to now, uh, the latest is uh, in two thousand and fourteen. So here is some example from the first assessment report 1990 so this report uh, at first it uh, is more towards like uh, what do we know about climate change what do we understand so the first assessment report is on that there are also some supplementary reports uh, done in 1992 so it's a, it's a supplementary of the first uh, assessment report next is uh, 1995 um, <coughs> uh, IPCC uh, assessment report so this is more uh, more analysis eh? more technical analysis are available in 1995 okay then in 2001 the third assessment report came out so uh, here you can see that there are more uh, information on uh, how do we what do we do for climate change like for example there are some uh, adaptation and vulnerability uh, mitigations okay so this is in 2001 and followed by uh, assessment report in 2007 and the latest is the fifth assessment report which is in 2014 so uh, there will be a new assessment report sixth assessment report coming uh, so basically everybody is waiting for that so again, we have this big question. So what is climate change? Uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, about global warming. So yes, it is related to climate change. And I think you also know that. Uh, so global warming, also referred to as climate change, is the, uh, is the observed century scale rise in the average temperature of the Earth's climate system and its related effects. So it is uh, uh, like a, a long... Uh, case uh, a long study case as mentioned in the slide before it is about the change in temperature so there are records uh, which shows the increase of temperature the annual mean temperature 
where from uh, observation from 1880 up to now so we can see that uh, the temperature uh, is increasing so what do you see here is uh, at the y-axis uh, this is temperature anomaly okay so anomaly means the change of temperature from uh, some average baseline some of the important uh, things that we should look into for climate change analysis is this uh, climate extremes uh, and uh, extreme events change so uh, this is important and uh, this is related to our subject which is red so since 1990 the assessment report in 1990 it is mentioned that changes in the variability of weather and the frequency of extremes okay will generally have more impact than changes in the mean climates at a particular location so this shows that we need to look into the extremes information instead of just uh, the mean climate so this is just an example of the late, uh, not so late not so recent flood but in bangkok which is uh, related to uh, typhoon and uh, and linked to might be linked to climate change because it's a it's a an extreme event where uh, it exceeds uh, historical um, values another example is in queensland australia where uh, a really high record uh, recorded rainfall was uh, experienced and it was related to a la nina okay so la nina uh, madden union oscillations are some of the um, uh, climate climatic system okay uh, but particularly la nina it, this is related to uh, uh, climate change okay global warming so the pattern of this uh, climatic systems okay but uh, this flood is also due to some dam operation management which is uh, mentioned in uh, the news okay about their dam operation management and also during monsoon season so you can guess where this is yeah so this is in kelantan uh, 2014 where it was the worst uh, most worst uh, recorded uh, flood occurred uh, in the east coast of peninsula malaysia this is what I mentioned before, where there is some study where uh, at this uh, during this time there was a Madden Julian oscillation and then a really low temperature below anomalies at the Siberian high. Okay, this is the upper hemisphere. So due to this, the monsoon during uh, this time was really intense and created a really ex uh, uh, in, uh, extreme uh, monsoon. This is also an, an extreme event where uh, I'm sure you know this, this is drought. So what else here? This is, uh, this shows that um, uh, future risk and impacts are caused by a changing climate. Changing uh, climate change will amplify existing risk and create new risk for natural and human system. Uh, risks are unevenly distributed and are generally greater for disadvantaged people and communities in countries uh, at all levels of development. So this increasing magnitudes of warming increase the likelihood of severe, pervasive, irreversible impact for people, species and ecosystem. So continued high emission would lead to mostly negative impacts for biodiversity, ecosystem, services and economic development and again amplify risk for livelihoods and for food and human security. So uh, climate change impact is a really important study. Yeah? It relates to uh, everything, uh, human, uh, environment, okay, uh, and the uh, economy as well. So the question is, uh, why do climate change happen? Okay, from what? So it is from natural processes and human activities. A natural process actually is uh, like changes in the sun's intensity, volcanic eruptions, uh, or slow changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun. 
natural processes within climate systems such as change in ocean current circulation uh, and also due to human activities so this includes like uh, carbon dioxide emissions through uh, burning fossils okay coal oil gas and peat uh, methane and nitrous oxide emissions from agriculture and also due to land use changes such as deforestation, reforestation, urbanization. Okay. So we know that uh, climate change occurred due to uh, some sources naturally and also due to human. So what do these uh, things uh, create actually? So it is uh, greenhouse gases. So greenhouse gases uh, like carbon dioxide, nitrate, methane. So this kind of gases are actually the, um, the I, I think it's, it's the tools uh, of, for climate change. So we create those tools. A human create those tools and also natural process creates those tools. So these tools or greenhouse gases uh, are actually that makes uh, our uh, global warming. So due to these greenhouse uh, gases, so this creates the what we call the greenhouse effect. Okay, so what this what are these greenhouse effects? So uh, uh, let's say we have uh, okay we we have our planet our Earth. So number one, uh, sunlight passes through the atmosphere and warms the Earth, and then uh, it should be some infrared radiation uh, given off by Earth it means that the uh, the can eh, daripada Earth. Okay, but uh, most escapes to outer space, eh, allowing to uh, the Earth to cool. Okay, but some infrared radiation is trapped by gases in the air. So these are the uh, culprit, the greenhouse gases. Eh? It, it doesn't let this infrared escape. So it, the, the gases are trapped, keeping the Earth warm enough. Uh, uh, actually, it is good to sustain life, actually, but... Uh, due to uh, too much increasing levels of carbon dioxide, the amount of heat retained causing the atmosphere and earth surface to heat up. So this is what we call the uh, greenhouse effect. Again, so you can see this uh, in a, a different um, uh, figure, so, but, but the same concept. Uh, the sun gives uh, some radiations, but uh, because of these greenhouse gases, a lot of the radiation are trapped. So this is greenhouse effect. So greenhouse gases, so it's include carbon dioxide. So where does carbon dioxide comes from? From uh, industrial, okay, from industry. And uh, due to some industrial revolution, uh, there is an, an really a high increase of carbon dioxide. Okay, and then methane. Uh, this is mostly due to some, uh, uh, for example, plantations like rice, okay, and then uh, stocks like cattle, biomass burning, uh, and a, a lot of eh, natural gas, fossil fuels, so it produced methane. And also CFC, uh, where from aerosol propellants, eh, uh, okay, but this CFC was not present before. It, before 1930s, there were none CFC, but because of the uh, human activities, human development, so we have CFC now. And then also nitrous oxide from agriculture. So these are greenhouse gases. Okay, so the question is, are these greenhouse gases real? Uh, are we making them up? Uh, are we making them up? Okay, kalau ikutkan uh, Trump tu, uh, dia tak percaya. <laughs> Okay, but uh, there are a lot of evidence, <coughs> like from certain observations, surface temperatures, some theories, okay, theories of the planets, number two, and then measurement from ice cores, which uh, goes back to 160,000 years before. Okay, so certain observation, uh, it can actually uh, detect uh, what kind of gases uh, of radiation emitted from the Earth's surface. So there are some uh, information of these greenhouse gases uh, uh, a lot from certain observation. So the second one is uh, the uh, theory, supporting theory of the planets where uh, depending on their atmospheres, 
uh, surface temperature of planet Venus, Earth and Mars are in general agreement with greenhouse theory which are influenced by their atmospheres. So these are considered as some supporting theories uh, for greenhouse gas. Okay, so they are saying that compared to Earth, Mars greenhouse effect is almost insignificant. This is due to Mars have thin layers, okay, thin layers uh, of atmosphere uh, which do not trap any heat and then that is why Mars is so cold. Okay, but uh, compared to Venus, uh, its effect is so strong because Venus has a thick atmosphere which prevents heat from escaping and therefore uh, the temperature is extremely high. So this supports the theory of greenhouse gas. Okay, the third uh, uh, is really interesting where uh, they measure gas eh, from ice cores going back to 160,000 years. So they actually bore, make a uh, drill a bore and take out the um, uh, ice bores and then they study the, the, the gas traps in the bubbles of these bores. So the layers of the ice, the layers and then the they, they do some testing and then the bubbles trapped in these layers so and then they can determine what kind of gas are there uh, since a thousand years ago. So this is an example of the ice cores where layers by layers they can determine how old is the ice. So the ice cores taken from Greenland and Antarctic okay from North and South Pole. So they test those things. So from their records, it shows that the concentration of carbon dioxide uh, uh, did increase, okay, especially starting from around the 1900s, okay, where the industrial revolution started to occur. Okay, so these three graphs shows the changes uh, of uh, temperature, uh, average sea level and northern hemisphere snow cover so the important uh, thing here is that uh, the temperature increase we can see that and then the average sea level also increases and also uh, the decrease of uh, northern hemisphere snow cover so these are all some evidence of the uh, global warming Okay, so this is the Vostok ice core data. Remember the ice core that uh, we drilled. Okay, so we can see in this graph that uh, carbon dioxide, which is the blue color and the temperature, which is the red. So it really correlates well. So if we uh, feel that uh, the temperature is increasing, then it correlates with a carbon dioxide increase. Okay, so if we zoom the time, okay, bef uh, I mean we zoom the recent one, uh, I mean 10,000 years eh, before 2005. Okay, so this is the timeline. So we can see the carbon dioxide, okay, it's a drastic increase, okay, and then methane also, drastic increase, okay, so this is uh, this our, our years, eh, our eras. So we can see that uh, there are evidence okay of the greenhouse gases uh, uh, increasing okay uh, more than the previous uh, thousand years before we can see this here so what are the impact of climate change actually so it is the change of patterns for example changing rain and snow patterns okay and then stronger storms uh, higher temperatures uh, okay so all of these contributes to like for example more droughts rising sea level damaged corals due to uh, sea temperature okay and warmer oceans uh, many things nests snow and ice and changes in plant life cycles so we know that uh, the <coughs> causes uh, the factors of climate change so what do we do so what's next so this where uh, comes the uh, scientifics, okay, the science where uh, we can model our climate. So there are climate models. So scientists and researchers now are using these climate models to predict our climate uh, in, in 100 years. Um, 
For example, this is a global circulation model. So what are these models? So this model actually models the whole globe, the whole uh, climate of the globe. Okay, using um, uh, physics, okay, uh, physics processes, uh, theories, okay. So they model the climate uh, according to some grids. Uh, so there are horizontal grid and vertical grid. So horizontal grid are like latitude and longitude, while vertical grid are the difference in pressure. Why <clears throat> why do we uh, model our climate? So one to try and understand the climate change and variability, okay, and then to estimate future greenhouse gas concentrations, okay. So we need to estimate the uh, GHG concentrations, and then we can estimate the future of climate change. So uh, how do we uh, predict the GHG? So we know that GHG depends on the magnitude of human-made emissions and how changes in climate and other environmental conditions may influence. So we can actually uh, assume okay, uh, how the concentration of GHG will be in the future. Okay, another important thing of climate model is uh, their outputs. So what are the outputs of climate models? So it is called climate model. So of course, the output of climate model is climate data, which is rainfall, temperature, solar radiation, humidity, uh, wind velocity, uh, and many more, okay, including pressure uh, and, and, and a lot of climate uh, parameters. Okay, so previously, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, longest uh, output is in 1990 where it is based on some scenarios uh, for example scenario a uh, which is uh, business as usual so uh, okay so business as usual means that uh, okay we see this uh, graph so this is the uh, business as usual uh, projection of the co2 concentration okay and then uh, scenario b progressively increasing levels of control reduce the growth of emission so for example this is the projected co2 concentration for scenario b okay so we can see that because of some uh, measures are taken which control reduce the growth of emissions so the ghg gas concentration is lower than business as usual uh, so uh, what else okay and then uh, scenario d okay so there are a lot of scenarios where we predict uh, the behaviors of the human, uh, the activities. So what is the projection of the greenhouse gases concentration? Okay, so these uh, here are the uh, scenarios. Uh, scenarios A1, scenarios B1, B2. So those are all some uh, different uh, assumptions of human activities okay, which contributes to uh, greenhouse gases projection right, so slides before uh, um, on the projection of uh, greenhouse gases okay but for this slide it is on output of climate model so see the y-axis it is the realized temperature rise uh, so the output of the model okay so this uh, this is an example of the output for using scenario A, business as usual, scenario B, scenario C, scenario D. So we can estimate the uh, temperature increase from uh, uh, here until 2100. So these are the output of climate model. Uh, for example, this is the temperature output. Okay, so this is the latest output in 2014. Okay, IPCC, I remember that assessment report IPCC 2014 so these are the output of uh, the models for I think it's the SNP the SMIP, uh, for SMIP is uh, they they collected all the GCM models in the world there, there are a lot of GCM models or climate models there are many so uh, what do IPCC do is they collect all the uh, outputs of GCM models and then they make uh, this kind of graphs Okay, so the first graph is the uh, projected GHG gas. 
Okay, and then uh, the, this graph, the next graph is uh, the graph on the right is the output uh, about the temperature, global surface warming. So according to different uh, scenarios, uh, so it will have some different output uh, of the temperature. So we can see this is until 2100. Okay, so the recent uh, ways okay, for uh, the next assessment report is they are using RCPs, representative, representative concentration pathways. So instead of using scenario A, B, C and D, so now the latest one is they are using RCP. Uh, for example, RCP 8.5 means unchecked pollution, RCP 4.5 moderate carbon cuts, and RCP 2.6 extreme carbon cuts. So they simplify the definition of the scenarios. Okay, so here's another uh, uh, output from IPCC, uh, but this is from the assessment report number five. So they are using the RCP uh, scenarios. Okay, so we can see uh, the um, estimated greenhouse gases uh, project projection. Okay, so again, uh, it is important that uh, we know that uh, knowledge of the global mean warming, okay, mean and change in precipitation is of limited use, okay. In determining the impact of climate change. Okay, example in agriculture, regional and seasonal changes. Okay, but uh, the most important is the climate extreme. Changes in the variability of weather and the frequency of extremes. So this will have generally more impact than changes in the mean. So we should focus on the climate change analysis for extreme values. So what do uh, I mean by extreme values? So extreme values mean, for example, we are looking uh, into flood impact analysis. So what we do is we analyze using uh, annual maximum series. Uh, for example, we uh, identify uh, the highest rainfall recorded in a year. Okay? So we use that data. Instead of we use uh, mean uh, mean uh, daily rainfall in a year so there will not be that uh, good uh, impact analysis but we will use uh, extreme values data okay so here is a, a, a very general description on how do we use uh, gcm data so what is gcm data gcm data is the climate model data that i mentioned Okay, so if we have a GCM data, general circulation model data, uh, from wherever it is, from SMIP3, SMIP5, so SMIP, SMIP means a coupled model intercomparison project. Okay, so there are a lot of models inside here. Okay, a lot of data. Okay, we, we don't run the model, we just use uh, the data. We use the output of the model. Okay, we just use the data. For example, we use the rainfall data we use the temperature data okay we don't run the model the model has already been run and we just take the output uh, for our analysis okay so once we have the gcm data for example the rainfall or temperature so first we need to look is their special and temporal resolution so what is special resolution it, it means in terms of space in terms of latitude and longitude so what is the resolution? Is it 20 kilometer or 100 kilometer? Okay, and then we look into the temporal resolution. What uh, a data, the, the, the data, uh, I mean period. Is it uh, data each three days or monthly data? Okay, so usually GCM has high spatial resolution. For example, 20 to 100 kilometer. Okay, so what do we do with this kind of data? First, we may need to check with observation data. We need to do some bias correction or validation. But this depends on the study. We, we don't really have to do this. We can just do a comparison study. So uh, like this one, climate change impact comparison study. So we don't analyze the data. We just use data for comparison. For example, we compare 
uh, the temperature increase in Malaysia and we compare the temperature increase in uh, Thailand, for example. So we just do some comparison. Uh, so we don't need to do uh, bias correction or validation because we are doing a comparison study. Okay, so if we use uh, this high spatial resolution data, we can use it just for regional or global uh, study or analysis. Okay, but if we want to do a more finer uh, analysis, for example, climate change impact analysis in a local area, for example, a river basin uh, uh, size, so we need to do some downscaling. Okay, we need a more a finer resolution. For example, uh, as of now, uh, there are some uh, data, so uh, GCM data where they downscale, so it becomes a RCM, a regional climate model. Okay, after downscaling, it will become a RCM, regional climate model. So this RCM will have a more finer resolution. For example, uh, one kilometer. Uh, around one kilometer or six kilometer, the 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 smallest that uh, I know of is a one kilometer, a Japanese uh, GCM model where it has a one kilometer uh, spatial resolution. Okay, and then for the temporal resolution, it is also more smaller. For example, a thirty minutes or a one hour uh, resolution. So, if we are uh, we have this RCM data, so we can do a climate change impact analysis data in a more localized area, for example, a river basin. But remember, we have to do some bias correction and validation. Okay, we need to check this with observation data. We need to uh, validate it with observa observation data. Okay, and then we can use it for any uh, climate change impact analysis. Here is uh, some example of a type of a bias correction method. For example, this is using quantile mapping. Okay, so use this this method is used to correct the input data provided by GCM models based on observed data. Okay, it correct climate model output to produce a consistent field which have the same statistical distribution as the observation. Okay, so we can correct. The I mean uh, we call it bias correction because we we want to correct the bias bias of the GCM models, okay? Because it's a simulated data, so it will have some bias. So we uh okay. So for quantile mapping, we can correct the statistical distribution, okay? So we can correct it and uh, com compare it to uh, observation data. Okay, so we compress observed and simulated data and we adjust the simulated data variance okay assist to get a more realistic understanding on the changes in the mean and variability of the data okay so for example this variability can affect uh, reservoir storage capacity average durations of large flood and drought okay so remember uh, for example, bias correction, we can do the correction for the statistical distribution. Okay, we cannot correct the uh, GCM data like uh, day by day data, but we can correct its statistical distribution. So, for example, we have the annual maximum uh, data for rainfall. Okay, so we have this data. And we do some distribution fitting. Okay, this is this all are frequency analysis. These are all our frequency analysis. You don't need to remember it, but uh, what we do is uh, using the distribution models, uh, we correct the uh, statistics of these distribution models. So uh, this this other process. Okay, we we first we need to fit which distribution is the best. Say so fit both observed data and GCM data by using, for example, GEV distribution, and then we estimate their parameters, and then we do some inverse function uh, to extract. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, uh, we, we actually wanted to find the factor, okay, so that we can um, uh, correct uh, the uh, data of the um, uh, simulated uh, GCM data, okay. 
So uh, the, what we call the factor is this transfer function okay, to both historical and future GCM data. Okay, and then uh, we test again uh, of the uh, distribution models. Uh, so uh, wh what do we do? Wh what is this actually? So this is actually uh, used for design rainfall. Okay, we can use this for design rainfall. Okay, so this, uh, for example, we have, okay, the y-axis here is the cumulative probability distribution. Okay, then the x-axis is the annual maximum rainfall. So here we see there are a lot of uh, different kind of models. Okay, and then this is the observed data. So this is what we call the distribution, the statistical distribution of different climate models so we need to compare it with uh, observed data so after bias correction uh, it should fit like this okay so this uh, is okay if you don't understand so this is actually a uh, uh, this is uh, actually frequency analysis okay so these are all distribution models so this uh, uh, vocabulary of climate. So by now you should uh, be familiar with this, uh, right? I'm sure you're familiar before, but now uh, I hope you have a new, uh, broad, broader understanding about climate change. About that, uh, it's important to look on the extremes and not just the means, so that we can see the uh, or analyze the impact of climate change. So we have finished our slide. So now uh, is your first assignment. So uh, this is uh, uh, you need to prepare. Uh, the estimated time is from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. And then we will have a presentation, uh, a really brief presentation uh, from 3.30 p.m. until 5, where uh, we will meet in uh, online. Okay, so uh, the question is here, frequency of extreme floods are observed to be much significant nowadays. Okay, this could be due to climate change. Climate change. So you are required to, one, search for a scientific study which have relations between uh, flood uh, or hazard map and climate change. Okay, so the keyword is flood and climate change. Okay, and then two, summarize the findings of the paper or article. Okay, uh, introduction, uh, objective, what are the methods and what are the results or impact. So do this really briefly. So try to make a presentation, an eight minute presentation with a seven minute discussion. Okay, it should be really brief but uh, informational. Okay, so good luck.